Good morning. I'm blessed and grateful to be in recovery. My name is Dr. Felice Cellini, and this is our Why Wait for Recovery Sunday Morning Recovery Community Meeting. Good morning, everybody. My name is Haiti, and I am in recovery. I'm a compulsive over eater. I'm an emotional eater. I'm the binge of the purger. I am a drug addict, food addict in recovery. I'm a drug addict, alcoholic, anorexic in recovery, and welcome. And we get together twice a week to discuss how what recovery looks like, how we get it, um, and how we work on it, because it is a constant process. And um, we get support from each other, because that's what it takes to stay healthy. This is our weekly medicine. <laughs> it is. This is our weekly community meeting where we all get well, you guys, so thank you so much for joining us. This morning, we were asked by one of our newcomers, to speak about cross addiction and so we called it if I put down the fork or the, if I if I put down the spoon can I pick up the fork and so we know that a lot of us who are drug addicts or alcoholics or anorexics um, when we stop picking up whatever our drug of choice is um, it's super super easy you guys to pick up food to pick up binging right or emotional overeating because it's so friggin socially acceptable to do it and and um, you know, I, I'm not falling down the stairs if I eat 43 Oreos. Right, or if sex becomes my thing, or gambling, or anything that we pick up to replace, or smoking cigarettes is another fabulous one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so whatever it is that we're doing that um, nobody could actually point an immediate finger at us is the easiest thing, I think, to cross a dick. They do say, so a lot of you guys um, are post-bariatric surgery, and they do say statistically that 30% of people post bariatric surgery will in fact become alcoholics so yay yeah. so that shows us <laughs> she's raising her hand yeah that <laughs> thank you we're getting yeses from the crowd here Evidence. so that that shows us that talks to us about cross addiction but it talks to us more about how the alcohol or the sex or the drugs or or the binging um, is not the problem we're the problem our thinking, our perspective, that's the problem. So in the beginning, we're gonna put down our drug of choice because we have to clean out the receptors in the brain. We'll put down our drug of choice so that we could step into recovery, so that we could stop picking up. That's the way that it needs to, to go, right? So we need abstinence, we need to step into recovery. And you guys, it's the recovery part that's gonna let us not cross a debt. Because if I'm miserable and walking around fearful and I'm using because of that um, just because I put down my drug of choice doesn't mean I'm not miserable and fearful right now I'm just a miserable fe again I say this every time you know they say in the rooms if I'm an alcoholic horse thief and I stop drinking I'm still a horse thief so we got to get rid of the horse thief part so that's the part that we work on and some of us actually walk around as those dry, what I call like the dry drunk. So we're obsessing about the stuff and all we're doing is thinking about whatever the next thing is and we're losing the moment as well. So it's not always necessarily picking up right then because relapse starts happening long before we actually pick up for many of us. No, for all of us actually. And um, <laughs> well, I can only talk from me because, <laughs> um, and so it becomes this total obsession. For me as an addict, it starts up here where I obsess about something and it's all I can think about. and my thoughts become my compulsions towards action when I'm not in recovery and I'm in active addiction. So that part of being abstinent starts clearing up my mind that I can start thinking properly and I can start disassociating those feelings from actions and actually start focusing on other things to start working on getting well. So one of the big things in getting well is being able to talk about it. Because I have this committee in my head that's always chirping about this is a great idea, just one, just whatever the story is, it's constant noise and action in my head. That is why we have our online community, which is on Zoom. We have people joining us in the room physically in South Florida. We have people who join us online on Zoom. And um, we also live stream on different formats. And you might be seeing us on Facebook. If you are, you can hop onto Zoom. It's a free meeting. Hop in so we can actually discuss it. This, I also want to just point out, is not the Felice and Haiti show, okay? This is a place where we talk, so anytime you've got something to say, chime in, voice your opinion. Um, this is not N-A-O-A-A-A. -A -A. We got clean in the rooms, but for some of us, and I'm across, I'm an addict, so I will rel I've relapsed on different things. Um, so we are, we work the steps. We have our own system of doing it. 
but the way but we are our own community right so yeah. Haiti and I are just two girls in recovery who are here talking to you guys about recovery so we're not representing and uh, we do talk about OA and AA and, and NA because um, that's where we got clean and so shout out awesome awesome anywhere you anywhere you get clean you guys is amazing so we will refer back to them but we're not affiliated with any type of program like that right right so should we we should hear from the group because we talked to Don and she said that I way talk too much so let's hear <laughs> let's hear uh, the opinion of the group so everybody I'm, I'm sure everybody has has had some type of cross addiction I think that we all do um, and remember again the recovery part of it when we're sure you know hey you said um, for you you know when we're talking about relapse that the relapse happens before you pick up and I said that happens with everybody and you said you can only talk for yourself which is absolutely true and I can only talk for myself but you guys if we're actually in recovery we don't pick up so that's why they say that the relapse happens long before you pick up because you know they say if we're not working on recovery right if we're not going forward then we're then we're walking toward um, our relapse so I'm so pleased that you actually mentioned this again because I'm very passionate okay. about recovery. It's really been a life changer for me. I mean, the amounts of blessings and shift and things that have come with recovery are awesome. And the only way to really know about it is to start experiencing it because my life's opened up in so many ways. But I'm very active online in different groups and communities. And one of the debates this week is that relapse is inevitable and that it happens. And it's not everybody's story. You know, some people get clean and stay clean. Some people God relapse. Bless those people, but man. whatever the story is, it's the shame and guilt that go hand in hand that we schlep around with us. So just so anyone knows, no matter what state you are, if you in active addiction or you in relapse, as long as you got a desire to have a shift and a change and want to be clean, this is the place to come and do it. And we also don't shoot our wounded. So no matter where you are, just pop back into a meeting. Yeah, you guys, I relapsed after seven years. You know, I was uh, full of shame. Uh, the thing is, though, is that I was invited back um, with open arms from everybody. So that shame that we do, that we put on ourselves. Do we need to relapse? No. I know lots and lots of people in recovery that have years and years and haven't relapsed. And like I said, God bless you guys, man. Like, it's awesome that you could do it. I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I wasn't working uh, toward my recovery at that time. Even though I looked real good on the outside, I obviously wasn't looking so good on the inside. So let's check in with you guys and see what you have Can to say. Can I just say something you, about you that? Will. About your you relapse. Will. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about my relapse, so my guilt and shame. Okay, so you didn't relapse on the same substance, though. Yeah, I did. Because uh, I'm, oh. I'm uh, yeah, I relapsed on opiates when I went into the room. I was, um, I went in for alcohol and opiate. Oh, I thought, it was, I thought it was alcohol. So I relapsed on different things. Relapsed on everything. I relapsed on, from She's food, I relapsed really on relapser. drugs. I relapsed on cigarettes. So anything, one addiction is not worse than another. Correct. I mean, addiction for us is addiction. Whatever you're picking up to change how you're feeling is that's your substance of choice, no matter what you want to call it. If it's a person, if it's gambling, if it's whatever. Right. All right. So yeah. I've been smoking a lot of cigarettes and drinking a lot of coffee since I got sober. But I'm sober from drugs and alcohol. Okay. Um, should I be worried? Is your life unmanageable? No. Okay, so here's the thing. Remember, <clears throat> in the rooms, the first step is, right, that, that, that we're powerless over our addiction. Are people powerless over cigarettes? F yeah, man, they are. <laughs> so they say cigarettes and heroin are uh, pretty close there. But, and my life has become unmanageable. For me, if I have three cups of coffee a day, it doesn't make my life unmanageable. If I'm smoking and coughing and hacking and I'm waking up in the morning and I'm saying, today, no matter what, I'm not going to smoke and I can't get through the day without smoking, for me, that's the unmanageability part. Because you're not falling down the stairs when you smoke a cigarette. No. But is it something that you don't have that control over because remember you have control over your own actions and your own perspective right. so help me out here uh i think i have control over it i don't think that i have wanted to change it yet well that's not what i asked <laughs> <laughs> i didn't want to change eating opiates either so i mean so. i totally wanted to change my other addictions my okay really bad addictions that i did not do you think about over. do you obsess about cigarettes in the respect that you wake up and say shit like today no. i wish i wasn't smoking no, no. 
So can I? I yes, you, you just can. said something. <laughs> so when I was smoking, because smoking is my thing. I love to smoke. Okay, it's one of my things. But I was stopping doing things to have that cigarette. So I, I would put off. I will start this project or start working mm. in 20 minutes after I have the cigarette. I will do this. I can't do this until I have a cigarette. So it became a constant conversation in my mm. daily activity. Yeah, so that for me became unmanageable because everything I needed to do had to either have a cigarette before or a cigarette after. And it became that obsession okay, that started that same thinking for me. So if you're not in the same place, then it's different. But for me, that became a problem. Yeah, and, and remember, you guys, um, we can't, we're not in your shoes. Right. So it depends on, for me, I know that if I have to ask about a behavior, it's probably because I'm having some negative thoughts about the behavior. Well, Otherwise, I'm thinking it's possible that um, there's still some things maybe I'm not dealing with that, you know, like he said, so anything that changes the way you feel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, coffee gives me more energy and cigarettes. But remember, so I go to Panthers games. Shout out to the Panthers. You guys are awesome. <laughs> um, so I go to the Panthers games and they make me feel great, right? But they're not bad for me. And I don't obsess about them. And I don't think, you know what, today I really don't want to go to a Panthers game and then I wind up going to a Panthers game. No, really. So it's yeah. my thoughts behind it as well. So that's something that'll be easier for you to figure out, I think, if you think about it that way. And, you know, you said it's something that you work on. It's something we're all working on, right? Mm -hmm. And so that, that, I love that you said that. Yeah, so there are always going to be things that we're, good morning, Ellie. Always going to be things that we're working on still, right? Oh, and, did you want to, you sorry. and also, I, you make me think about something. When I first, you know, I've been in the rooms for a while, but it took me a long time before I started really understanding the concept of recovery. And yeah. when I really, the last time I came back in, I was so miserable and it's such a low that I was willing to do anything yeah. just to not be in the same place because I was so scared. But then I also became obsessed about not enjoying life. Like, um, there was that element of when I started feeling that I was punishing myself because I was still learning the rules, you know, and I'm mm -hmm. still learning, feeling my way around. And all of a sudden, anytime I thought I was really starting to enjoy myself, oh, that's an addiction because, <laughs> you know, I started getting into that headspace. And this is for me. So mm -hmm. it became really an interesting asking questions and finding where people are at and what that looks like for them for me to make decisions because my decision making up until that point hadn't been that good. No. But remember, and my life has become unmanageable. So it's what unmanageability means to you. That's, that's pretty basic. Okay. So again, if I'm waking up in the morning and I say, wow, no matter what today, I'm not gonna go to the Panthers game because I'm not gonna spend the money and it's too cold there and I don't feel well and then I feel bad about if they lose and then I have, if I have all of those thoughts and I go to the game anyway, that's unmanageability because mm -hmm. that game is what's running my day. Right. And instead of me being present in this moment with you, right now I'm thinking about the game. Mm -hmm. So if it's making me miss the movie, if it's something that I'm obsessed about, and if it's making my life unmanageable, then for this addict, I have a problem. Anybody wanna share? Share, share, share. Yeah. Hi. Hi, good morning. Good, good morning, morning, Ellie. Ellie. Listener's button was my friend this morning. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, thinking about unmanageability. Speak up, baby. <clears throat> speaking about unmanageability, um, I, uh, you know, it's, I think it's like 23 days or something in my clean time. Um, oh. Um, but I, I still am working through it. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't, in the beginning when I first started this, I was like, I don't feel any different. I was talking to a friend about this yesterday and then, but now I'm like, holy shit, I feel a lot of different things and I'm still trying to figure out how to manage my life, where my boundaries are, um, what is the next right thing? What are my correct decisions? Um, uh, and I don't, I don't have that yet. I haven't figured it out. That's okay. So thanks for sharing that. So we're going to spend the rest of our lives figuring it out. And to be where you are right now is a really scary place. Again, we talk about that, right? Because I'm having these feelings or I'm scared 
and I can't pick up or I choose not to pick up. So now what the F do I do, right? Um, so what you're going through is what every single person who's ever gotten clean goes through. And so it's a scary, hard place to be. Um, you know, you reach out to the community. You're doing great because you talk about it. You talk about it. You talk about it. Um, I could tell by your demeanor today that you're going through something, that you're having some sadness or some fear or because you're not, you know, you're not presenting the way that you usually do. And I'm sorry that you're in that place. And I'm glad that you're in that place because you need to be in this place so that you can get help from your sponsor and your community figuring it out what it is that those fears are so that you can walk through them because remember the more fear angeli hmm. the more fear we walk through present the more fear we walk through right hmm. the less fear we have is that correct yeah yeah so angeli had you know if we all have eight million forms of fear she had nine million i'm telling you as her sponsor she did and as she walked through fear, walked through fear, walked through fear, walked through fear, it makes us a little bit stronger and happier at the end of walking through that. And to understand that you're not going to die, that feelings aren't facts, they're feelings, that it's okay to be sad because it doesn't mean we're going to be sad forever. It's okay to be scared because it doesn't mean we're going to be scared forever. It just means that right now I'm scared and I'm not going to binge and... I'm going to get to the other side of that and realize that I can survive without binging. And I can take a look at what it is that I'm fearful of and find out what is my part in it. Right? Four steps. So are you on your fourth step yet? Third. Okay, so what is my part in it? Right? Why am I fearful? What am I afraid of losing or not getting? And that's always going to be the basis for our fear, no matter what our fear, right? Every negative feeling is fear-based, you guys. So... So what is that? And that you work through with your sponsor. And uh, do you reach out to others in the community? You and I talk. Yeah, I reach out to a lot of people. Awesome. Keep it up, girl. Man, you're doing great. It's hard. It's really, really hard. You guys, if recover, recovery is awesome. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. We all wouldn't be hanging out here. I can understand where she's at. Completely understand where you're at. Um, I'm 31 days back Ooh, today awesome. and you know I was away I was almost to six months when I relapsed mm -hmm. and thank God it was only a half a day and thank God my seat and my presence in the community mattered enough for people to reach out and help me even though it made me mad <laughs> you know <laughs> but it's a wonderful feeling when you have that support that you don't even know that you had but the one thing that I really came to understand from that, which I think was the greatest part of mine, is the fear. I was completely afraid of everything. I was afraid to pull my big girl panties up and take charge of my life again. I wanted to sit in the background and just let everything happen. And I didn't want to step up to the plate and do what I needed to do. Um... So when I got sober this time, I changed everything, everything. My people, places, things, my meetings. I go to more meetings. I reach out to more people. Um, I actually live in the world now. I can actually go with people outside of my house and not isolate. So I changed everything. All my meetings, I mean, just everything. And that is what has worked for me now. And I feel I have people tell me, you're just different. You're different, Shannon. You're, you're spiritually different. You're emotionally different. That makes me feel good because I know that I'm working and I'm not wanting acclimates back. And Mine's very, always that face of everything's great. You're also very willing. So yeah. even the first time you stepped into this room and we called you out on whatever mm -hmm. and you were like, okay, like I'm willing to hear it. And so we know that willingness, you know, wanting it, needing it, we all want it and need it. We mm -hmm. all want and need recovery. Mm -hmm. How willing, how far are you, uh, you know, will you go for your recovery? I'm willing and to I, hear all the negative yeah. because I'm learning how, and that's a big thing. I got the, net, I got all that stuff like in two weeks and I've not relapsed over it. And I've gone to my sponsor. I've learned how to talk to people and say, this is where I'm at, you know, and I, I'm realizing it's okay to be where I'm at. Very importantly, you said something that I think everybody needs to hear. You said, instead of sitting back and letting my life happen, 
Mm -hmm. right? I'm taking responsibility for my actions. So mm -hmm. when I sit back, when you sit back and let your life happen, you allow yourself to become a victim. Mm -hmm. Well, this is happening and this is happening and this mm -hmm. is happening. It gives you all the excuses because poor pitiful you. Exactly. Right? I've lived as a victim my, my entire life from my childhood drama and trauma. From there, I've always been that, well, you, you'll never understand me. Right. You never went through what I went through as right. a child, so you'll never be able to understand. And I don't feel that way anymore. Yeah, you know what? Good job, you, man. Like, really, I'm really, really proud of you. And thank, thank you. you for sharing that. Thank you. And I love when people share because they, it stimulates so many different thoughts. And I just wanted to share something with you. Within my first 30 days back, I mean, in terms of the last time that I did it, the first 30 days and those first, couple of sh those first couple of steps, first day I was looking at how unmanageable my life was. I'd been the same way for 42 years. I'd been living in an active addiction for 42 years. Recovery is not something you get. It's not like a, here I arrived and I've, done the, I've achieved recovery. It's a journey. So it's a continual process and keeping mindful that it didn't, we didn't get to this place overnight. It took time and those behaviors and those things that we always thought have been our thoughts for so long and learning something new is really scary because I always thought I was a control freak. I thought I was in control of everything and I stepped into this unknown water that I had no idea what anything looked like and that fear of not being in and realizing that I've got so little control, I felt in it. I actually felt that I was incapable of doing absolutely anything within those first 90 days for me was so traumatic in terms of I know I want something different but what that looks like I'm totally totally clueless mm -hmm. and if I could go out and buy it or box it or ship it via Amazon <laughs> I would love to do that okay Absolutely. but it's a process and no one else can do this for us and the amazing thing is I only had two emotions before before I stepped into the rooms it was either good or bad mm -hmm. and things were either good or bad and all of a sudden starting to feel other things can also get overwhelming because starting to name them and identify them is a process I'm learning. I'm starting to know what my part is in the greater world is also a whole process of starting to get to know me and it takes time. So the thing I'm learning the most to be is really to be kind and compassionate towards myself first okay. as well. Mm -hmm. And be gentle on yourself. And remember that it's going to get better. And remember we're here, and remember we love you, and we think that you're awesome. And that it's going to get better. I can promise you that it's going to get better. Mm -hmm. Promise. Me too. Yeah, me too. Anybody else have anything to share? Karen? I'll share. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, go Good morning. You know, I, as, it, as you're talking about cross-addiction, I think I have always been, and, and probably still am to a certain degree, addicted to chaos. Because if I don't have something I'm chewing on in terms of what's going on in the world, or my world, my family, whatever, then I feel at loose end. So I think that's my cross addiction. So I have to tell you that when you say stuff like that, I'm proud to be your sponsor. Well, thank you. So that chaos is something that we have to work through. We have to recognize and work through every single day of our lives because that addiction to chaos, remember, our addiction is chaos, and when we let go of the addiction, um, very, very many of us are addicted to chaos, and staying addicted to that chaos, we're going to pick up. So that was a really awesome thing to say. Thank you. Anybody else want to talk about chaos? Is that, does that stem from ego? No. No, no it doesn't. Yeah. It stems from being in the middle of, ah, so that I don't have to look at myself. If I'm stepping into your crap and paying attention to what's wrong with you and making a whole bunch of chaos in the room, I don't need to look at myself, Haiti. Right? I could just, I could look at you and call you out on your shit and see what she has to change. And I don't huh. have to pay any attention to what I'm going through myself. So is that the judgmental side of it? It's, it's judging. It, yeah, yeah, it's, yes, it is. We, we learn to judge everybody else and to walk into their chaos so that we don't have to take a look at ourselves. So anything that we do to make it so that we don't have to say, hey, what's going on with me? And if I am stepping into your chaos, why is that? Karen, why is that? what about when you make chaos for yourself yeah, that well, isn't that's, even there? Yeah. That, that's like picking up. <laughs> I mean, because that's kind of like today, I'm, I'm there. I'm at that point. 
you know, and speak. I don't know so why. So speak and, yeah, speak. Tell us if you can, not in abstract. Well, what are I'm you doing? getting, okay, we're getting a new washer and dryer today. Awesome. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. All awesome. excited. And, but for me, I'm stressed out about it why? because I'm not the one that's going to be lifting it and putting it into the house and figuring it all out. I'm not going to be in control of that situation. Okay. So, so, how does so that, I'm all nuts. How, how, look at me. How is that serving you? It's not. Right. And at all. My okay. sponsor's going to be there because I'm crazy. Okay, so yes, you're, you're having a crazy moment, but and correct that you said that you have no control over it. Why would you want to be in control over your washing machine and dryer? Anyway, let the, the only thing that you could do, so I right now... I want to control everything. Right, okay, so right now you're scared, mm -hmm. right? So all of our negative stuff is fear. So mm -hmm. I'm either af afraid of not mm -hmm. getting what I want or losing what I have. Mm -hmm. Right? Not getting what you want, it's not going to be done perfectly, and I'm the only person that can put it exactly where it's supposed to be. And if he puts it over there, and I think, blah, 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 that's me. Let it go. Let it go. You're not the washing machine repairman. I know. Okay, <laughs> right? You're not. And so that fear doesn't serve you. And let me tell you something. Let's say they're coming at four o'clock, mm -hmm. and you walk around the whole entire day scared. What's going to happen if they do this and maybe it's going to leak on the floor and then the kids are going to want to do their laundry and they're not going to and then tomorrow I'm not going to have my clothes ready for work. And let's say you do that all day, mm -hmm. right? And they come at four o'clock. Or let's say you say, I'm getting a new washing machine and dryer. I am so excited. Um, you know, as soon as they come, I'm going to throw in a load and see how awesome it works. At four, look at me, at four o'clock today, it's going to be four o'clock. The only difference is going to be your journey to four o'clock today. So pay attention and stay into the moment. Your fear doesn't change what's happening because at four o'clock today, it's gonna to be four o'clock today. When the washing machine and the dryer get put in the house, they're gonna get put in the house. Whether you're scared or not, nothing's gonna change. That's awesome. Yeah, so remember that. That's awesome, thank you. Okay, what is it that you have control over? Your perspective, mm -hmm. not the washing machine. Yeah, you're right. Choose to be happy. What are three things that you're grateful for about getting a new washing machine and dryer? I'm grateful I don't have to spend a lot of money to do my laundry anymore. I don't have to go to a laundromat to do my laundry anymore. Three. And um, I can do laundry whenever I want to now. So whenever you're fearful today, I want you to very slowly say those things to yourself. Wow, I don't have to go to the laundromat. I'm so grateful. Wow, I can do my laundry whenever I want. I'm so grateful. I want you to change the chemistry in your brain and change your perspective, and you're going to see that it's going to help you let go of the fear.